So, I came on into Nashua today where everybody's watching KingCast. I've had a beer. I've had a puppy. Rode a motorcycle. Those aren't the real stories, though. Here's the real story. Uh, no, uh, in point of fact, the real story is town council uh, Brian Cullen is very well aware is that it's time for him to give me those 2006 Porsche tapes from Mike Gannon. And whether or not the National Police Department think that Mr. Gannon is a YouTube sensation now, just wait a while, okay? Because I'm going to the FBI with this. You know, there comes a time when you have to stand up for what's right, and uh, that's what's right. Let's get it poppin' like it's New Year's Eve. Uh-huh. I hear you. Well, I'm a former uh, law enforcement attorney myself. And, you know, I, I respect the badge, but some individual officers, you can't respect them because they're not worthy of it. They yeah, mistreat the, I the public. Yeah, it, it's bad. I'm sorry, run that by me again. And so when they arrested Mike Gannon that night, he had done absolutely nothing illegal, and they took him down unprovoked. Where were you? Were you there? I was less than 10 feet away. Is that right? Yeah. Mr. Gannon, did you ever receive a uh, copy or were you allowed to view or use the tapes from 2006 at your home? Were you able to use those in uh, at any point in time? i never seen them since the day they raided my house and took them. Okay, because... And I was never offered to see them. I've been asked to get to give them back and... No, I've never been offered or have seen them. Okay, because that right there, that's potentially exculpatory evidence, given that they charged you with several infractions at that time. You should have had access to those. That's a civil rights violation right there. It's due process, substantive, and procedural. Yeah, the only reason I mentioned that wiretapping issue is because that's the deal. They don't want us, they don't really want to change the laws because they don't want us taping them. Right. You see, that's what's going on here. And, and that's so, why the police were so angry, I think, because when Mike said, I'm videotaping, I am taping you, Right. that's when they attacked him. Oh, yeah. Every day. And then he made the statement to them that he was recording this conversation. And that's when the officer got mad and started raising his voice even further and telling Mike he was going to go to jail. And Mike turned and looked at him and says, I'm done with you guys. I'm taking my dog and going home. And he turned his back to the officer and walked away. You know, and I fear now I don't trust any of them. I don't have any trust for them. I, you know, and it's scary. It's... Uh, uh, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate yeah, your time. still bruised up. be seen by thousands more people, and I've got a sign big enough to be seen from the bridge. So if anyone wants to come with me, that'd be welcome. Up there. And I see you. Oh, you're right up here. You're, going, you're headed up there. Are you willing to come because that sign will be really good? I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dynamite on the bridge. This sign. All right. Y'all hold the fort down here. All right. Mr. Ridley, can I see that sign, sir? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There are a few. Well, we're here at KingCast.net in Nashua, New Hampshire. We're following up on the alleged Mike Gannon beatdown of 1 July 2011. We'll let the witnesses speak for the record. Ma'am, could you uh, raise your right hand, please? Uh, state your name. Pamela Reynolds. And do you swear to tell uh, the truth of, of, your, uh, of your recollection of the events to the best of your capabilities right now, as if on oath? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, well, tell us what happened. Um, July, you can put your hand down now. <laughs> Friday, July 1st. Um, it was a typical day. I picked my fiancé up around 4.30. He had just got done work. We weren't sure where we wanted to have dinner, so we decided to stop down on Canal Street. And there was some people there sitting, drinking coffee that we know, so we figured we'd stop and talk and just hang for a little while, chill out. Okay, now what, about what time of uh, day or evening was this? 4.30 in the afternoon. Very well. Continue. Um, we were sitting there probably for about an hour. Yep. Drinking a nice coffee, talking. Uh, Mike Gannon 
came walking down with his dog, came over to us to say hello, and we had our dog with us, which is a Siberian Husky also, and they were kind of, you know, playing, and some kids came over to pat the dogs, Mike was talking, we were talking back and forth, and then all of a sudden this silk I didn't realize what it was at first, but a silver car had gone by with two men in it and blew the horn and were waving and saying, hey, Mr. Gannon, and waving at him. And Mike turned and said, oh, there goes corruption at its finest. Um, they got to the end of the canal at the stopped light because it was red. And the gentleman on the passenger side stuck his head out and said, um, Mike, what did you say? And Mr. Gannon repeated what he said. There's corruption at its finest. Did he, did he, uh, were there any vulgarities interlaced with that or anything of that nature? No. From, okay, continue. No. And the officer yelled, do you want to get arrested? And Mike said, for what? I'm standing here with my dog. And the gentleman jumped out of the silver car and came over towards Mike. And then they were behind us in the park. But how far away were they at that point from, uh, from you? Well, it's hard to say. Um, 30, no, 40 feet, 50 no, feet, 60? Five feet. Oh, right right near you. Yeah, they were right behind okay. us in the park in the grassy area. In the grassy knoll, yes. The detective came up to Mike and um, I don't remember the exact words that were going back and forth. You know, um, and then the other... Tell us what you do remember. Well, I'm trying to get to that. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, the other detective that was driving the car went from the left-hand lane in front of the right-hand, turning right-hand lane, and blocked traffic. Nobody could go anywhere, and he jumped out of the car and came over. So both detectives were, like, in Mike's face, and Mike kept trying to walk away. He says, I'm going, I'm done, I'm taking my dog and walking back home. They wouldn't let him leave. Um, they just kept getting closer and closer to him. And um, Had Mr. Gannon left the sidewalk at any point in time with no, his animal? No, he okay. never was in the road. Okay. Except in the beginning, when, when he, was, he first showed up, he yeah. was standing in the park and there's a space to park a car. He was standing there talking to us with yeah. his dog. On Canal walking. Street. Right. Yes. Um, uh, uh, after a brief uh, back and forth with these two detectives, Mike says, by the way, I'm recording you. Okay. And he holds up a little orange or red recorder. Yes. Video recorder. Yes. And at that point, both gentlemen jumped on No, me. stop right there. Are you sure it was a video recorder or was it uh, perhaps uh, a, a audio? It was, it was video, you say? I believe it was video and audio. It's just okay. a little small. I got you. Um, Please continue. Both, both detectives grabbed Mike on each side. Mm -hmm. And at that point, Mike yelled out, Pam, here, take this. And he threw the camera to me. Okay. And it landed right in my hands. And right. he was probably about as far from you to me when yeah. he threw it to the me. The record reflected the witness is about five and a half, six feet away. Yes. I caught it. I'm like, I don't want to be in the middle of this. So okay. I threw it in some bushes. Okay. Be up in the park. In the little park right there at the triangle kind of there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I walked back. And at this point, my fiance was very upset with what he was seeing. These officers had Mike cuffed and pepper sprayed him three or four times in the face. And he was on the ground and they were punching and just punching him and kicking him and beating him. And you saw that? Yeah. And I went to grab my dog and say to tell Brian, let's go. I want to get out of here. I don't want to be involved in this. You know, and he was just beside himself with what he was witnessing. Um, and the next thing I know, the detective said to one of the other officers who had showed up, uh, grab her, and he pointed at me, and the officer just tackled me, basically like a football player would tackle somebody. Um, I get, you know, very shooken up about this. It was very humiliating, uh, very unnecessary. Uh, he grabbed me. I don't remember exactly the whole thing. Um, I know he had this arm behind me, and I was holding my dog with my left hand, 
and he says, I'm going to pepper spray you. And he pepper sprayed me, and I, that, and I remember I was on the ground. And I landed on this arm under me, and he was on my back with his knee in the bottom of my back, yelling, give me your arm, and I couldn't get off it because it was under me, and he was on top of me. And he finally yanked it out and put me in cuffs, and I was in so much pain from the pepper spray. I was just screaming. I was crying. Um, it was uh, it was bad. I've never been so humiliated and, and treated so badly in my life. Have you thought about filing a civil suit? I feel there is a need for one, and I'm working on it. Very um, good. Not that I want the money. Yeah. I just want them to be you know, brought to justice for the way I was treated. And, Held accountable. And um, the lies that they've made up and what they have charged me with is just ridiculous. You know, I mean, I've raised my two daughters on my own. I have my 19-year-old who's going in the Army in January. I have two beautiful daughters, and I was sitting there and minding you, my business. And you're not, a, you're, not a, you're not historically in trouble with the police or anything of that nature? No. I... Like I said, I gave up my life and raised my two daughters. Right. I mean, I was young and dumb at one time. Sure, young, there's no law against that. Did some dumb things, you know, but, um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's horrible. Let me ask you this. I find that I've been researching what states between New Hampshire and Massachusetts I see initiatives that have been brought up in the last several years to change the wire, so-called wiretapping laws. But if you notice, there's never any resolution to that. I can't see where there's been anything done. See, I really don't get into all this. I'm a simple person. person. Right. Um, I don't look on the. I don't go on a computer to look up. You know, geez, what are the police doing this week? Or, you know, I mean, um, I try to keep to myself. Right. And live my life. Yeah. I was dragged into something I should have never been dragged into. Well, are you upset with Mike or are you upset with the police or both? No, I don't have any... I'm upset with what the police did to him. Yeah. You know, and I fear now I don't trust any of them. I don't have any trust for them. I, you know, and it's scary. It's... Um, yeah, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate yeah, your I'm still bruised up. Oh, yeah, let me know. see that. I see that. Let me get that in color, as a matter of fact. Time out. It's kind of fading, but yeah. Let me see. Let me see that. Uh, you said you had a bruise there. Yeah. Yeah. They bruised me up yep. really bad. Let me um, get that again. It's kind of fading. Maybe. Yeah. But I think that you can still see it. Hold I on. I still have a lot of. That got you. Let it down too soon. That hurt. Yeah. Hold on. I think that's about as good as I can get it for right now. But you can. Yeah. It's both arms. Oh yeah. Let me get it right there. Sure. Absolutely. Hold on. Yeah. Down see it right here. there. Hold on. Stay right there. One, three, two, and. Yeah, the only reason I mentioned that wiretapping issue is because that's the deal. They don't want us, they don't really want to change the laws because they don't want us taping them. Right. You see, that's what's going on here. And, and that's so, why the police were so angry, I think, because when Mike said, I'm videotaping, I am taping you. Right. That's when they attacked him. Oh, yeah. And because it was thrown to me, because Mike wanted me to, to keep it for him, you know, while they were arresting him. I didn't want a part of it. I didn't want to be in the middle of it. I threw it and said, no, I'm right. not going to be in the middle of this. I want to leave and get out of this. But yeah. I didn't even have that chance. Right. Know? Because of the position uh, that the police put Mike in. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I hear you. Well, I'm a former uh, law enforcement attorney myself. And, you know, I, I respect the badge, but some individual officers, you can't respect them because they're not worthy of it. They yeah, mistreat the, I the agree. public. Yeah, it, it's bad. I'm sorry, run that by me again. And so when they arrested Mike Gannon that night, he had done absolutely nothing illegal, and they took him down unprovoked. Where were you? Were you there? I was less than 10 feet away. Is that right? Yeah. Like from there to there? Yeah. More or less? 8 to 10 feet from him at the time. Right. During the whole incident. Did you hear the police say anything about, what did you hear the police say? Didn't actually hear the comment, just know that they made one when they first drove by. Right. And then proceeded to watch the passenger, the 
officer on the passenger side of the car climb halfway out of the car to uh -huh. respond to Mike and ask him what he said, so yeah. Mike repeated it. Yeah. Then he jumped out of the car in traffic to come over and start screaming at Mike, telling him he was going to get arrested for being a loud mouth and, and disorderly. Had Mike uh, sworn at him or threatened him in any way? No, not at all. All he did was just make a statement to them, which is his freedom. First Amendment. Voice his opinion. First Amendment, every day. And then he made the statement to them that he was recording this conversation. And that's when the officer got mad and started raising his voice even further and telling Mike he was going to go to jail. And Mike turned and looked at him and says, I'm done with you guys. I'm taking my dog and going home. And he turned his back to the officer and walked away. The officer walked his path. Mike said it again, tried to walk away the second time. That's when the officer and another officer that had showed up took him to the ground. Wow. Fascinating. Uh, and, sir, could you uh, raise your right hand, please? Uh, your name? Brian Raymond. Mr. Raymond, uh, do you swear that the uh, preceding statements were made uh, to the best of your recollection, uh, as if on oath? I do. Thank you, sir. Welcome to Massachusetts. All right, thank Okay, guys. You. We'll see you. Yeah, enjoy the blog, and uh, you guys take care of yourself. Check yeah, there'll be up, something up tonight or tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, as you were, sir? I gotta go. When they I gotta, took, when, the, the, when the officer took her to the ground, he kneeled in the middle of her back on her tailbone and pushed her face onto the ground while they tried to, while they proceeded to handcuff her, the second officer. Was she visibly resisting or trying to hurt them? No, but she couldn't move because one arm was underneath her and the other one he had in his a grip on with the handcuff already on it. Yeah, it sounds like one of those shady areas where it's like a legal hold, but it's still abusive. One of those shady kind of... Exactly, they're pushing of... her face into the dirt, and yelling well, at her to move and, and give her the other hand, and meanwhile he's kneeling on her tailbone, pushing her face into the dirt. Yeah, I still think there's a civil rights violation, even though the hold may be technically correct. And you guys need to get a good lawyer. I mean, it's hard around here. I'm not going to disparage anyone directly, but look, lawyers know how New Hampshire works. And I've been in the system before as a state attorney and on my own in a different state. I see it here. And I know, you know, you don't, there's certain, it's like the thin blue line. Yeah, well. Yeah. Then, then when they finally did get her, as if one of the officers decided he was going to spray her with that mace or pepper spray or whatever it was. And then they yank him on her hands, and they got her handcuffed, and they're holding her down still. And she's screaming in pain and can't breathe. Yeah. Asked for an ambulance, and they wouldn't give it to her. Right. They wouldn't take her to the hospital. They she, refused yeah, to. She mentioned that. Well, they refused to take her to the hospital. They made her get in the cruiser and go to the police station instead. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gannon, did you ever receive a uh, copy or were you allowed to view or use the tapes from 2006 at your home? Were you able to use those in uh, at any point in time? i never seen them since the day they raided my house and took them. Okay, because... And I was never offered to see them. I've been asked to get, give them back and no, I've never been offered okay because that right there that's potentially exculpatory evidence given that they charged you with several infractions at that time you should have had access to those that's a civil rights violation right there it's due process substantive and procedural next uh, let's talk about the video from the first of July do you believe that that video exonerates you of the charges yes I believe so okay well then you're entitled to that as well pronto because that too is exculpatory evidence so, you know, we're going to get to that, and I'm not sure if I'm entitled to it because they're going to say that's uh, an ongoing investigation or what have you, right. but I'm still going to put in my RSA 91, uh, 91A request for it and keep hammering at them publicly. Right. Yes, thank you. Yeah, indeed. Now, let me ask you this. Let's talk about the uh, agreement that I understand is in place regarding your truck that they impounded some time ago, and you said your son, PJ, had an agreement with them, and uh, they agreed to turn it over, but they have not, or what's going on with that? Uh, okay, the deal with the truck is... Uh a couple of weeks ago, his attorney and the DA, well, the, uh, the attorney at Nashua District Court, the prosecutor at Nashua District Court, made an agreement on returning the truck back to my premise, my possession. Right. On, uh, you know, just return it. Yeah. It's, you know, if they need it for anything, they know where it is, not to sell it, blah, blah, blah. And how long have they had the truck? And uh, since that agreement, I think we're going on 10 days now. Right. Now, how long did they have the truck from the, in the first place? Uh, July 5th is two months. Now, why? They say there's an ongoing investigation. They don't talk to me. 
Well, how did they come to get the truck? PJ was driving it? My son was driving it the night of this, uh, Santa Domingo. I guess that was the big party night. He was driving it. Or Secret de Mayo. Secret de Mayo, thank you. All right? I didn't celebrate it. I'm a big drinker. <laughs> right, 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 right. I don't even do St. Patty's Day. <laughs> but uh, he was driving a friend home. Yeah. And I guess during that night there was a stabbing. Yeah. And, but he wasn't there when it happened. Right. I mean, you know, as far as I know. I mean, but a couple of hours after the stabbing, he was driving a friend home. And they pulled him over and told him they were impounding the truck. I came over here, asked him why. I got a song and dance. And all I want is keys of documentation, state and wise. I see, so they never charged him with anything. He's been arrested now. And charged with what? Burglary or burglary or something. I, I, it, oh, really? From that same night? So, yeah, for that same night. Yeah. After, like a week after they impounded the truck. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Mr. Gannon, there was one area that we left untouched here. Uh, let's go back to 2006 again. My contention is that because these issues that, you know, on your porch involve matters of public interest, you know, after all, I think it was Detective Carlos was punished because of something that he did on your porch. My contention is that, you know, it was pretty clear that, A, it's not clear that you violated the law in the first place. Right. And, and B, the, the, right, the public's right of interest to know what's going on with the police force is compelling. So if I have to sue for that uh, RSA 91A request, I'm going to, and I, you know, told them that. But also, moreover, isn't it true that you had signs posted and that you told them at some point that they were being audio and video recorded? I uh, there is there was several signs posted on the property. Yes, and uh, the day this all started, a sergeant Michael Jones and a husky detective show. And while well, there was like a group of them, but I let them two into the house during the walk through looking for my son Patrick. Mm -hmm. I uh, mentioned to Sergeant Michael Jones and this husky detective that uh, I have audio and surveillance equipment on. Yeah. And his answer was, so. Right. And uh, actual, the night- Actually, that's actual notice. And the night I was booked, uh, detective, no, he wasn't a detective. He was canine officer Craig, I want to say Gauthier or Gunthia. And uh, he came down into booking and made a comment, so you're running your big mouth off because I went up there and told them I was running audio and video surveillance equipment it, because I went to the video, the audio part, because of the canine officers following them out in front of my house. Right. See, I, I had surveillance because of the neighborhood, the way the neighborhood was. Yeah. But I added the mouthpiece, the vi uh, audio. Yeah. Because of the canine officers' filthy mouth in front of my house. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And he came down into booking. Mm-hmm. This is stuff I never let out either. Right. Yeah, I believe you. I, I don't. I don't trust these guys. There's. I've never. I, I had a problem with one officer, and I wrote him up. He, he was a lieutenant. Uh, you know, he was a detective. I'm sorry. And uh, the team, Tim Gould and I were cool. He he knew me, and I yeah. knew him pretty well. Um, and people talk, you know, pretty bad about him, but I never had a problem with him or any, anybody else. You know, there's a couple other guys I that I know pretty well. A couple of detectives here that are pretty cool. All right. Uh, Chris Peach is all right as yeah. far as I'm concerned, but you know, uh, some of these guys need a, a swift kick in the ass. Approach. Yeah. yeah, you know, 50 50. You know, I mean, not, you know, these guys come up and say, Hey, nice day. You're not going to scream at them. Beautiful day, you know, yeah. lousy weather. Yeah, you know, that's New England, but you don't, you know, you got the, they got the answer that he couldn't handle. He made a comment and he got what he didn't like to hear. That's right. But, uh, Sean, he delivers uh, the summons. Uh huh. He's a great cop. He's, a, he's probably got the nicest one I've ever met, uh, McCarthy or McConnell. Mm -hmm. I've run into him in the neighborhood. He's another great, you know. Yeah, sure. It's the way they approach you. Yeah. It's like man to man, nice guy, you know. Yeah, you but know. that guy, that detective who bum rushed you the other day, he had nothing, no intentions of being nice. He was, oh, no, no, he, no. He, he didn't, didn't say, well, it was my birthday that weekend. He didn't say happy birthday. He didn't say Merry <laughs> Christmas, you're losing weight. Uh, yeah. Nothing, you know. Yeah. He got a truthful, truthful, honest answer to the statement he made to me and you know what and he acted in conformity with your statement right he freaked out yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks mike yeah be well thank you talk to you take care oh. yeah good luck to you yeah thank you chris okay gotta go get the wife all right <laughs> yeah playing that baby shower must have been rough on the harley uh four trips to market basket <laughs> to get yeah, stuff for a baby shower, the groceries for a baby shower. <laughs> Would have been nice if we had the truck. At least you've got the top box. I don't have that. <laughs> I got a backpack, a knapsack. <laughs> All right, brother, be good. You turn up.